Boris and Barbara were thinking about Miffy's birthday. What can we make for her? asked Barbara. Well, said Boris, spring will soon be here and I know that Miffy enjoys seeing the baby birds every year. What if I make her a special birdhouse that she can watch each day? Oh, that's a splendid idea, Boris, said Barbara. It should be painted brightly to attract a mother bird. I will make it an exact copy of Miffy's own house, only very small, just the right size for little birds. I have a picture of Miffy's house to guide me. Boris selected some of his best wooden planks, some pieces that would make the walls, a strong piece of wood for the floor and two sturdy pieces for the roof. First he drew a plan that showed the right sizes of wood and how they would all be fitted and nailed together. Then Boris measured a piece of wood with his special ruler and used a pencil to mark where the plank should be cut. He clamped the wood to his workbench so it would be held steady. And then he took out one of his sharp saws. He moved the saw back and forth over the line he had drawn with the pencil. He did this for each piece of wood until every part of the birdhouse was cut to the right size. Next he used a hammer to fasten all the pieces together. Finally there was a perfect little house. I will use my drill to make a little hole in the house, just big enough for the mother bird to get in and out. She will collect twigs and grass to make a cosy nest inside. Now it's ready for you to paint it, Barbara, said Boris. Barbara Bear had lots of jars of bright paint and a brush for each colour. Soon the little birdhouse really did look like a tiny model of Miffy's own house, with one small difference. On Miffy's birthday, Boris and Barbara brought the birdhouse to Miffy's house and set it up on a pole in Miffy's garden. Birthday, Miffy, said Boris and Barbara. We have a surprise for you. Come and see. Miffy was delighted with her birdhouse. It looks just like my house, said Miffy. But there's something different. Instead of a door, it has only that little hole in the front. That's a door for birds, said Boris. It's not a bunny door. They all laughed. Oh, how wonderful to have such clever friends, said Miffy. You have made me happy, and your present will also make a mother bird very happy. Now we all have something to be happy about. Miffy read that in some fairy tales, a fairy could give you three wishes. She wondered what she would wish for if a fairy granted her three wishes. My first wish would be that my mother and father would love me forever, she said. But she already knew that her mother and father would love her forever. So she tried to think of another wish. She decided to go for a walk. She was sure that she could think better while she was walking. There was Snuffy, who was, as always, very happy to see Miffy. Do you want to come along with me? asked Miffy.
While they were outside walking, Miffy and Snuffy met Aggie, who had her arm in a sling. Hello, Aggie, said Miffy. What happened to your arm? I fell down while I was roller skating, said Aggie, and I hurt it. I wish that your arm gets better soon, said Miffy. Thank you, Miffy, said Aggie. That was Miffy's first wish. If my wish is magic, Aggie's arm will be better tomorrow, she thought as she waved goodbye to her friend. As Miffy and Snuffy walked towards the forest, it began to rain. Miffy hadn't remembered to take an umbrella on her walk. Oh dear, said Miffy. I wish it would never rain and always be sunny. Miffy was surprised when it quickly stopped raining and the sun came out. I've wasted my second wish, she said. If there is only sunshine and no rain, the trees won't grow. Now she had only one wish left. My last wish would be for something very nice, she said to Snuffy. Miffy thought and thought as she walked along, looking around and trying to think of something important to wish for. She walked through a field full of flowers. Miffy thought about her mother and wanted to pick some flowers to bring home to her. But my mother likes yellow flowers best, she told Snuffy. I see lots of red flowers and lots of blue flowers. Shall I use my last wish to find some yellow flowers? Just around the bend, there was a whole field of lovely yellow flowers. Now I can use my last wish for something else, said Miffy. I will wish for an ice cream. Miffy picked a lovely bunch of flowers for her mother. Having three wishes is a wonderful thing, said Miffy as they began walking home. When Miffy gave Mother Bunny the bunch of yellow flowers, she was very happy. Oh, Miffy, she said, these are lovely. They are my favorite yellow flowers. I saved my last wish for a nice ice cream, said Miffy. Do you know what I wish for? I wish that my little Miffy will always be just as sweet as she is now. And she gave Miffy a big squeezy bunny hug. Then Mother Bunny went into the kitchen and gave Snuffy a nice bowl of fresh water. And Miffy and ice cream. Holiday time had arrived. When the school term was over, Miffy and her mother and Father Bunny were ready to go on their holiday. Miffy looked at a map so that she could see where they were going. One year they went to the seashore. This year they would go to the mountains. Mother Bunny said, we must pack our warm clothes. Why is that, Mother? asked Miffy. It's summertime. You will see, Miffy. Perhaps you will be surprised. Father Bunny made sure their car was safe for the long mountain trip. Off they went. Over beautiful hills, through the woods, and then up into the mountains. Miffy noticed that as they got higher, it became colder. When they stopped to look out at a wonderful view, they all put on their warm clothes. As they drove even higher, Miffy started to see patches of snow on the ground. That's strange, said Miffy. Snow in summertime? Now do you see, Miffy? The higher in the mountains you are, the colder it is. 
On some very high mountains, there is snow all year long, said Mother Bunny. When they arrived at the very top of the mountain, there was snow everywhere. Can we play with the snow, like in winter time? asked Miffy. Well, why don't we find out? said Father Bunny. Miffy and her parents made a snowman. Then they had fun throwing snowballs. Soon it was time to go back down the mountain again. As they drove lower and lower, it began to get warmer again. Finally they arrived at the shore of a beautiful lake. Here is where we will spend our holiday, said Mother Bunny. Look, Miffy, there's something waiting for you. Another surprise, shouted Miffy. First the snow, and now the boat. What a wonderful holiday. As her mother started to make preparations for their camping site, Miffy and her father went to the boat. They climbed into the boat and went off for a nice boat trip around the lake. When they returned, Miffy saw that Mother Bunny had made a campfire and a delicious picnic supper. This really is a wonderful holiday! Every morning, Miffy looked out of her window and watched for the post bunny. She hoped that one day a letter or a postcard might come for her. Mother Bunny said, Why don't you go and see if there's any post today, Miffy? Miffy went to the front door to have a look. And there was some post. She picked it up and carried it to the kitchen table. Well, here's this morning's newspaper, said Mother Bunny. And here is a letter for me, from your Auntie Alice. And look, Miffy, here is a pretty postcard addressed to you from your friend Melanie. How exciting, said Miffy. Her friend Melanie was on holiday with her parents. The postcard had a pretty postage stamp on it. Look, Mother, here are some little pictures that Melanie drew herself. Melanie has drawn a sun on the postcard, said Miffy. That means they are having lovely weather. And next to the sun, she has drawn some wavy lines like water. That means they are swimming in the ocean. Look, there is even a picture of a brightly coloured fish. Yes, said Miffy's mother. Melanie is a clever little bunny. Her next drawing is a smiling face. So that means they are having a happy time. And look, she has drawn a little picture of herself. So you know that it really is from Melanie. I would like to send a postcard back to Melanie and I will draw a picture of me on it, said Miffy. Here is a postcard you can use, said Miffy's mother. You can also draw some other pictures on it for Melanie. Why don't you draw a picture of our little house? So Miffy took the postcard and her pencil outside and looked carefully at her house. Yes, she thought. 
My drawing looks just like our house. Then Miffy wanted to draw a flower on her postcard. So she went into her garden where a lovely flower was growing. She looked at the flower very carefully and then she drew a picture of it on the postcard. Just then, a butterfly landed on the flower and Miffy quickly drew a picture of the butterfly. Then Miffy went back inside to finish her drawings. She drew a picture of herself and Melanie. That will show Melanie how much I like her, Miffy thought. Miffy coloured her drawings. She gave the White House a red roof, red shutters and a green window. She made the flower red and the leaves green. She coloured the butterfly yellow. She left the drawing of herself white and coloured the drawing of Melanie brown. They looked very pretty together. Miffy put a stamp on her postcard. Then she walked to the post box and carefully pushed her postcard into the post box. When she walked home, Miffy thought, the post is a wonderful thing. We can be together with our friends, even when we are far away from each other. And indeed, Melanie was delighted with her postcard. It was autumn. Leaves were falling and clouds were gathering. Miffy was playing outside with her ball when suddenly it started to rain heavily. Before her dress got wet, she ran into her house. If you want to play outside, Miffy, you must wear your coat, her mother said. Miffy put on her coat. Just when she was going outside again, Barbara Bear knocked at the door. It has stopped raining, Mrs Bunny. Can Miffy come to the woods with me, please? We can look for beautiful autumn leaves to make decorations. That sounds like a lovely thing to do, Barbara. But it might rain again, so be sure that Miffy wears her coat. It was good fun looking for pretty leaves with Barbara. They found some yellow leaves, some red leaves and some brown leaves. These will make beautiful decorations said Barbara. Look, the sun has come out again and it's getting warm. We can hang up our coats on this tree branch while we go to look for more leaves. Soon their baskets were full of pretty leaves. Are you thirsty from all that work, Miffy? asked Barbara. Let's go to my house. I have some cool lemonade we can drink. They went inside Barbara's wooden house. Just as they were drinking their lemonade, Miffy looked out of the window and saw that it was raining again, very heavily. Oh dear! Our coats, said Barbara. They're still outside, hanging on that tree branch. They will be completely soaked. We will be completely soaked if we go out to get them, said Miffy. Don't worry, Miffy, said Barbara. I have an umbrella that is big enough to cover both of us. Under Barbara's umbrella, they ran to the tree where their coats were hanging. They were dripping wet. I can't put on my coat, said Miffy. How will I get home? My mother will be angry if my dress gets wet too. I will walk home with you, Miffy, said Barbara. My umbrella will keep us dry. The two friends were still nice and dry when they reached Miffy's house. Miffy wondered what her mother would say when she saw that Miffy had come home without her coat. When Mother Bunny saw them under the umbrella, she was pleased that Miffy had not got wet in the rain. Miffy, where is your coat? I'm sorry, my coat is soaking wet, said Miffy, and I left it hanging on a tree branch. That's all right, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. You can go and fetch your coat when it stops raining. Thank you, Barbara, for keeping Miffy dry with your umbrella. Come in and have some tea. After tea, it was still raining. 
Miffy and Barbara looked at all the pretty leaves they had collected. What shall we make with all of our leaves? asked Miffy. As it's still raining, said Barbara, how about a rain hat? Yes, said Miffy. And as I don't have my coat, I will make a rain cape. Soon Barbara had a fabulous rain hat. And Miffy had a colourful cape. They ran outside and were surprised to find that it had finally stopped raining. Come on, Miffy. Now that the sun is shining, let's go and collect our coats. OK, said Miffy. And this time we shall bring the umbrella, the new hat and the new cape, just in case it starts to rain again. Puppy 